one, and we are officially live, my friend. John Clark, what is up, baby? How are you doing, Mr. Wall? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well, man. It, it's uh, it, it, it's. I know a lot of people complaining about how cold it is outside, but it's it's warm in here, man. And, and, and we're uh, we're definitely slanging a bunch of houses, man. And I'm I'm excited to have you on today. Well, I appreciate you having me, and it's definitely getting hot in this place. Uh, it's <laughs> it's nice when you've got a competitive atmosphere, you know. Yeah, no, absolutely, brother. And I and I, I don't want to sell you short. Um, the, the title of the show is a little bit misleading. <laughs> um, while you were driving an Uber, um, I, I want to give credit where credit is due, man. You were you were definitely one of the top salespeople for Shreddit for quite some time, and and so I want to I want to definitely recognize that, man. We were we were we were um, fortunate enough to to pull you out of corporate America and into real estate, and and um, man, you've truly uh, not let us down, and so that's why I wanted to bring you on today, and I, I know you're excited to share your story. Um, you have a, a bit of an amazing story. You're a bit of an anomaly. Um, I, I would say that, you know, from an industry perspective, but, you know, once you get to know you, uh, definitely, I think that, that this was the expectation for you right out of the gate. Um, you know, just like the title said, you came in and you started selling houses right away and you've been a student of the game. Before we dive into, you know, your, your, your success and, and your work ethic. I want to talk to uh, to the fact that you know you are a brand new agent and you came from an industry. You there, Bada? Do we got? I love the technical difficulties, man. Listen, we, this wouldn't be a great show without technical difficulties. But <laughs> here we go. So. So real quick, man, let's just let, let's give a quick bio on you, man. Tell tell everybody a little bit about where you come from and, and who John Clark is. Sure. Well, um, I moved here from New York about 20 years ago. I was promoting nightclubs and pretty much uh, being a knucklehead, you know, the first first part of my life. And and uh, but then I started getting into uh, retail management and then into finally business to business sales. Um, and I started with Shreds uh, and started my first outside sales position. Did that for quite some time. Had some had some success, uh, but um, left the company on principle uh, for you know a while back. I was told I was too customer service oriented, uh, whatever that means. Um, I understand. I mean, they want you uh, in that environment to hit and quit and run on. But at the end of the day, when you look someone in the eye and tell them you're going to promise them something and give them something that you know your service provides, at the end, I want to follow through with that. So if a customer called me. I was Johnny on the spot, you know, of course I didn't mess up my day, I, but my, the boss didn't appreciate it. The one I had at the time. So I left, was gone for a couple of years and then, uh, came back. I actually told the guy in the back when you let him go, call me and I'll come back. And two and a half years later, they called me and I was back the next month. And, and, uh, I went to inside sales, which most people go the other route. They don't go, you know, they go from inside to outside, uh, more money. Well, I just figured I was fairly dangerous in a car multitasking with, phone calls and texting and driving and all that crazy stuff and setting appointments. I'm like, what if it's all right here in front of me? If I had all the tools that I need right here, I have operations right here. I have my management right here, billing right here. I mean, I'm going to be really dangerous. And so I really uh, kind of found my way with inside sales and being sort of a telephone terrorist for lack of a better word. Uh, and, and ended up being number one in the world for two years. Um, one first year was during a merge with our sworn enemy halfway through that year, which was CentOS. And then uh, second year was during a uh, time when we were bought for $2.2 billion by Stereocycle. So it was nice. It was some good clout. But unfortunately, at the end of the day, um, family means a lot to me. My name means more to me than anything. And I was training 130 people virtually, uh, just trying to help them get better. And so obviously, if, we're all, if we all do better, the, the company as a whole is going to be afforded more opportunity. So, you know, I, I, I started mentoring about 130 people with a weekly email and, and, and follow ups and doing basically a lot of stuff what you were doing here now in this industry, which I really love, um, which is helping your peers. And, and, you know, I've never had an opportunity or anything dim my light when I was trying to help somebody else shine. I mean, I don't care about that sort of thing. It's nice when somebody comes up and gives you a, a really big hug for helping them out, you know, and they you, you were that extra push that they needed. So, so that was what was my motivation. And unfortunately with the new company came uh, a position offered to me where I was going to be, you know, go up and, and management and be able to take care of some people. But they asked me to move to Dallas, Texas in a very short period of time. No offense to Texas. I know you're from there. Um, but they wanted me to convince a uh, hundred and we had 
two branches in every state and they wanted me to convince people to move to a regional call center or get fired. So I had to cut their legs off. And so I can't do that. I'm a people person. Now I can sell dreams and, you know, put the hard work to work for somebody else. And they actually appreciate it at the end of the day. And I'm not a, I'm actually a person, not a number anymore at a company, which is kind of a nice thing to, to be a part of again. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. And um, I think, I think while most people, um, I think the reason why most people tuned in today is they understand that in this industry, um, it's, it's just not a forgiving industry. Uh, this statistics show that about 85% of new agents fail in their first year. And then of those 15% that make it, 85% of those fail in the second year. And so you, you sort of bucked the trend, man. And, you know, you came in here, guns a blazing, you're, you know, your first three weeks, you put three deals under contract and you just haven't looked back. And, you know, we've set this system up um, so that the only component that's missing is someone like you, right? It, it is, is the only thing that the only thing we need in our system is somebody that's hungry, humble and smart. And, you know, the, I think you have all three of those qualities. And I think one good thing that um, I, I think is your, your, if I could say the reason why I think you're successful, it's because um, you're willing to, you're, you're willing to, you're willing to let the people who've gone before you blaze that trail and then absorb that information and then implement that into your business and into your life. And that's why you had success right away. Um, I, I, you know, the great thing about you, and I know John would back me up on this, is the fact that we just told you something and then you went and did it. And, you know, that's the bottom line. And that's why you'll go out and sell 30 plus houses in your first year in real estate and make a good income. So here's what I want to know, man. Um, you came into this industry, you sold three houses right out of the gate, man. And I, so our audience is wa watching right now. They're listening and they want to know, how did you do that, man? Honestly, uh, besides the way that it was set up and like, you know, going back to um, the compliment, thank you very much, by the way, for, you know, kind of letting the person that blazed the trail prior to me uh, kind of show me the way. That's exactly what I did. Uh, I never like to be the smartest guy in the room. Not that I ever really have that problem too often. I'm usually the funniest guy and the loudest one, but I'm not the, the smartest guy typically, but that's for a good reason too. Um, you know, uh, the reason why I think I had success early on is first of all, I was hungry. Uh, my wife afforded me, my wife's awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm blessed beyond, I, I can't even go how happy I am because she gave me the opportunity to do this. This is not something that someone uh, in a relationship for as long as we've been together, 21 years, been established, had some good things going on with my last job. Believe me, it was a kick in the teeth. So coming into this, I had to prove to her that all that hype that from, from my corporate life would, would, obviously translate into this world as well. And so you are right. Uh, all the tools are here. Everything's laid out for me. It's, it's, they've made it basically idiot proof here, or you guys have uh, to make money. The only thing you have to have is passion and actually the, the ability to come to work and do it. And the best part, I, you want to know really why I probably sold those off the dock is because I came in this office every single morning since the day I had my license. I was in here at 730 every morning since the day I got my license. I was here with the ISAs. And when these guys said, the very first day I walked in said, hey, someone wants a phone call at one o'clock. Anybody want to take it? And I saw two people kind of look away. I mean, they were, you know, granted, these people aren't with us anymore. But, but a couple of people looked away. I, I'll take it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. But I know people. And I know that if I get the information, that I have a team of people in here that will not make me look stupid. So I can at least get by, you know fake it till you make it sort of a deal, yeah. but it's just a matter of getting the activity. So uh, that same day, two hours later, he was so stoked that I took that call that I actually set me an appointment for uh, that following Sunday. Cause I think I passed on a Wednesday, Friday I was in the office, Sunday I had my uh, first uh, showing and that was the house that I sold for 265. So I'm, you know, it, it was set up perfectly for me. You guys basically said here, man, why don't you go, uh, you know, why don't you go sell this house? Yeah. And I'm like, it's, it's an easy thing to do. If you listen to people, once you get there, and, and, and just, you know, stay patient and do the job. Um, yeah, sorry. I don't know if I, hopefully I answered your question, all that rambling. No, you did. You did, definitely did it. And I think that, you know, one thing, one thing that's a blessing with you is the fact that you come, you come in here without any preconceived notions. Um, the reason why we like to hire newer people in some cases is because they haven't developed a lot of bad habits. Um, so that part is the blessing. The curse can be, um, they don't know what they have. In other words, they think 
new people sometimes think when they come into real estate that this is the way it is everywhere, right? And this is the way, like, even if they went to another company, this is the way it would be. And so, you know, so that that becomes then the challenge uh, of a team leader is just to be able to communicate the value to somebody like you. But, you know, that was ne never really a worry of yours. You know, you've been recruited from other agencies and, you know, you can you understand also that there are, are other brokerages out there who offer a higher commission split. But at the end of the day, the, it's, it's not about the commission split. It's about the money you're putting in the bank. And we've set this system up so that, you know, 100 percent of nothing is still nothing. Right. And so we've set this we've set this up so that, you know, our agents are making a good income here and they understand the tools and resources that they have available to them. You never bat in an eye about that, John. And that the great thing about you is that, you know, this goes back to what I was talking about before. You just kind of you you were a sponge, man. You came in and you 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 ask a lot of questions, which is great, right? You were eager to learn, and we it was easy to put you out there in front of people because you had people experience. So listen, that that part of the game has not changed, right? It's you're you're just selling something different. The 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 piece of the puzzle with you that was already in place is the fact that you've already you've already had experience you know being in front of people people like you people they know when they know you they'll buy a house from you right and so the the missing component in our system is that we provide you leads right so we will give you leads the only thing you have to do is bridge that gap between you know uh, not knowing and knowing which is essentially building rapport right and so you've been really good at that right out of the gate tell me tell me you know what does it mean to come into a business and 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 be entrusted right out of the gate to take leads from from us it's a wonderful thing i mean at my at my corporate job when i you know i told you about that and the success i had i had maybe two literally a telephone terrorist i was called nonstop, 106 times you know 106 phone calls 120 phone calls a day getting kicked in the teeth nonstop. that's the only way you can be successful here these are warm leads that come through but Listen, that's that's awesome, and the leads that are generated here are ridiculous, to be honest with you. I'm not used to this ever coming through, which is great for a sales guy like me. But the added bonus to this, and like you said with the recruitments from people, and I've been offered more money, the thing that keeps me here, I can sell three houses at a time it takes somebody else to sell one. So to me, I worked out the percentage, okay? I know what – I maybe I make a little less than – I have family members that do this all day long that thought that you know this was – they try to get me to come work for them as well. I just look at their model and I look at what, what's going on here. And I'm not, I'm, and I hope they don't take this the wrong way. I wasn't talking about what they're doing is wrong. Ours is just, to me, it just makes complete sense. I am not a, a, a you know, guy that likes to do a lot of paperwork and do all that. I am a rapport building guy. I'm a guy that likes to go out and try to make you smile, make you laugh and like show you some things, do some research and, you know, try to try to build up uh, what we're looking for. And, and but but uh, you guys take all of the hard stuff, the grunt work out of it and make it to where it's just sell, 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 which is what I'm about. Um, if I wanted to be an admin person, you know, I probably would have did another job. Um, but this is uh, you, the, the way the program set up is you get warm leads. And as long as you do the work, you have people to help you all the way to the end. And I think what you guys have given me more than anything. Yeah, money's a, a, a nice bonus, of course, uh, but you've given me time. And that's that I can't, unfortunately, I can, you can't get that back. Oh, you so start to sound like more me. time, I create more opportunity, therefore I make more money. <laughs> you're starting to sound like me. And I would be remiss, honestly, if I didn't mention um, our admin support uh, and Tangi and Dennis, uh, certainly Dusty. Uh, these are people that are here for us every day and, and um, afford us the time mm -hmm. to go out and be in front of our clients. Right. And, and so I know John, you know, you, you've, you've, Obviously, you've been a, a huge fan of, of, of having Tangi in place and having those um, having that administrative support on the back end, which allows you, you know, to to go out and do what's important, which is, you know, obviously be in front of your clients. But, you know, talk talk. I mean, being a new guy coming into our system, talk about what that administrative support has meant to you. It's been the app. It's been the world. Um, there's. You guys are so big. I don't, I don't work with bosses that don't work. You know what I mean? Like I don't have that luxury. <laughs> if some people look at it like that, I have bosses that actually stay busy and work are available, are available to you, but, but 
the, the back end people that we have here that are always here for every single person. Uh, I'm telling you, I, there was a, I think there was a rumor a while back that I might be going somewhere else. And I said, not unless Tangie's going somewhere. If you guys fire Tangie, I'm out. Other than that, you can't get rid of me. I'm kind of stuck in this joint. I'm making this office mine. So it's having Tangy, having Dusty, having Dennis uh, helping with listings, uh, Tangy with contracts all the way through to the very end. I can only imagine what a person that doesn't have somebody like them has to deal with. Like I can't with the with the text messages and phone calls you get from customers with complaints or whatever, because, you know, this is a very crazy industry where some people are just the best people you ever met in your life and some people just test you. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the end of the day, it comes down to you doing your best for that person. And and so to be there for them and, and always be there for them, as in like concentrating on what they're talking about now. I don't see how you could do that when you're worried about a listing going in at a certain time or a contract, an inspection being done within a deadline and checking back with a lender. I mean, that's Tangy is a godsend and so is Dusty and everybody else. So uh, yeah, I could, I could not imagine doing this without them. Um, yeah. I have no well, clue. You, you talked about time, man. And, and I think, um, you, you know, when you talk about time, you talk about, you know, dollar productive time. And, and what that means is, you know, when you're, when you're negotiating inspections or when you're filling out title or lender sheets or anything like that, it, it's not dollar productive. And, and so we have, we have the back end support so that, you know, you don't have to worry about those things. And I can tell you uh, from experience that salespeople uh, for the most part are not great at paperwork and they don't like no. it. And, and so we put those, we put those people in place because well, number one, they're better than us at it. And, and number two, Tangie's negotiated over a thousand deals. And so, so for, you know, to have somebody like that in place, when you hand a contract in and know that, she, you know, know that she's negotiated over a thousand deals, you know, you feel pretty good about that, right? You feel pretty good at the end of the day that I know probably my deal is probably going to get closed. And guess what? I'm, I'm back, you know, I'm, I'm back to the phones or I'm back to showings or I'm back to listing appointments where I need to be so that I can create more money and more opportunity for my family, right? Not to mention that there's a lot of anxiety associated with being a new realtor and all the legislation that you have to make sure, you know, uh, and policies and procedures that you need to stay within. So I'm, I feel much better. I would have, I would have been right out of the gate, to be honest with you, if I was doing all these contracts myself and, and you know, worried about dates and times and, and more worried about what I would be doing to my customer um, not only my own career, but you know, I don't ever want to do anything wrong. And she really keeps me in check. And the coolest thing about it is that she's, she doesn't get frustrated, man. It's like, she's, uh, you know, a teacher or something like a grade school. I don't know how, like those saints, you know, they can, they, they can teach you as well as make you understand. And she won't, she doesn't just give you the answer. She'll make you do it first. And then, you know, walk you through what you did. And so it's been, I've learned is, and that's what's most important, you know, is, is that I'm actually, I'm not just here throwing contracts to her and hoping something gets done and it sticks. I mean, I'm trying to trying to learn this throughout the whole process so I can take less of her time away actually. So we can concentrate on getting more people, you know, more deals that she can concentrate on with them instead of having to just hang out with the new guy. So, but she's, uh, she's good at balancing everybody and as is the majority of our team. So talk, so here's what I want to know, man, you mentioned that, you know, part of success or your success, um, is the fact that you know you show up every day at seven thirty, um, and you know I I would I, I would definitely say that consistency is a is a is a huge piece of anyone's success. But talk about like it. What is it? What does a, a typical day look like for you? Well, quite honestly, it's about to get a lot more live here now because um, I've started to figure some more things out. I've had I've had some decent success during you know the time short time that i've been here but it's nowhere close to where i want to be so uh, i've got to up my telephone game a little bit and uh and i'm starting to uh make the calendar a little bit more detailed i kind of like your idea of how you do things that way um but uh so but i come in 7 30 in the morning i try to get anything knocked out prior to that sometimes i make it in here even earlier than that um and and try to knock out anything email related or anything that's you know admin related and i don't usually jump on the phone calls to people until about eight o'clock just because I know sure. I figured some people like catch hell on like on that. But, but um, you know, if you start too much earlier than that, usually I'll get right in that range. And then usually it'll be, you know, till 10 or 11 and then maybe we're looking at showings. I pick up my son 
Um, every single day I get to drop him off and pick him up. So, you know, the time thing, yeah, it goes back to dollar productive, but family productive is, has been really wicked fantastic in the last six, eight months. I mean, donuts with dad every single morning. Dude, I, I never had this before. So um, no that. more buses. People don't and know you throw that on my salary. Talk about it also counts as my salary, you know, saving 500 bucks a month. <laughs> Talk about donuts with dad, I man. Because that, li listen, I don't, I don't, I don't want to gloss over that. Like, I, I want people to understand that the great thing about the environment we've created also is that we've given people like you the flexibility that they need to have time with their family. But you know, you told me about that, that donuts with dad. Um, talk, so talk a little bit about that, if you don't mind. What is that, donuts with dad? Well, every morning I used to drop him off before I went to to work, but it was at the. Uh, at the bus and I'd like, you know, he just go on get on the bus and take off. Well now every single morning I go up and grab a coffee and he gets a donut and we get to talk and, and we're always the first ones in line to drop, uh, drop him off at school at seven 30. So he gets to take care of whatever he needs to get done before eight. Um, and then I'm always the first one there to pick him up as well. I, I tell you guys, it's uh, pretty important to me that I'm out by one fifty wherever I'm at. So I'm in line at two o'clock to pick him up by two twenty five, and, and he knows that I'm always the first one there. So, get him settled at home and then I can do my showings or whatever I have to do because the wife's usually home shortly thereafter. But you know, the freedom is what I think a lot of realtors go for in this position is why people come to real estate. But I don't yeah. think they understand that that doesn't pay you. So it, it's a matter you have to prioritize your time, but that's in every single job. Um, but here it's for me, success is a little bit different than what, from what some other people, you know, I've done the, the grind and the 60, 70 hours and, and all that jazz. And, I love this life, man. This is where it's at and, and selling stuff that, you know, people, yeah, there's investments and there's different weird things that you can do in this, you know, to make money. But overall, this is somebody who's like really looking for something to live in with their family. So, so I can really get behind it and it's easy for me to do it. And I only like to sell with integrity. So uh, it's a perfect industry. You know, um, I don't know. I just, I've never been happier. Yeah, no, I appreciate you sharing that, man. And, and so, do, so do this. Like, I know for a fact right now that there are agents um, out in our local community, um, Cincinnati, Dayton, who are struggling, man, just to put it together. And and they might have, um, they might have the drive, they might have the ambition, they just don't have the guidance, they don't have the direction. Um, a lot of them don't have the leads either because they just simply can't afford them, or they they're not experienced in in lead generation. What do you say to those people, man? Man, it is so worth coming to a team like this or a setup like like we have where everything's included in the price. Uh, I think a lot of people don't understand. Like there's a lot of people that were in my Hondros class uh, six months ago, seven months ago that I've still followed up with them because, of course, I'm trying to recruit people the whole time I was in, in class because I, I knew we had stock options and stuff like yeah. that for getting people, you know, so so I was kind of fired up about it. So so I was trying to get everybody at first um, and I've kept in touch with a lot of them and a lot of them aren't doing as well uh, as what, you know, they're all fired up when you first come out. And, and that's because they went for a place that seriously gave them a good commission, but not a lot of support um, uh, as it relates to training or even just when you first come in uh admin support any of that so i can see see I, i'm not an idiot uh if if anybody in that class could have took off and tried to do it himself it would have been me and i still think i would have fell on my face yeah. so i think this was the absolute best when, when when leads are handed to you now they're not wasted here that's one thing i want to get clear like if, if you don't answer a lead it will go to somebody else mm -hmm. so we we want we're customer focused and agent focused here. So it's, it's a, it's a huge bonus versus trying to do it all yourself here. You have, not only you have leaders and team members, uh, that'll help you nonstop here. You also have the access to everything EXP related, which is 24, seven, 365. So, you know, <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Did that answer your question? It, man, it did. And it, um, so I, 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 what do you think about, I mean, is it important to you that we allow you to promote yourself here and that you're not, you, you, you know, I think that, the, the reason why we set this team up the way we did and called it the Love Ohio Living Team and not, you know, the Mike Wall home selling team or the Wall Group or something like that is because we wanted our agents to create an identity. What does that mean to you, man? Oh, it's very important because I've been I've been trying to market myself for the last eight years. Uh, and, and so you guys have actually given me an avenue to continue that. Um, there's no hindrance on on 
on that at all. I think it's set up flawlessly, actually. Um, uh, you guys give us access to a website and then, you know, like you can go off and get your own link, which is more personal for yourself or that goes straight to the website. So I feel like it is my business, um, you know, and, but I still have people that care enough to ask me what I'm doing and stay yeah. on my butt. You know, that's one thing I think some people aren't hip to them. Nobody likes a sales manager. I'm telling you straight up, nobody likes them. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> unfortunately, but that's exactly why you need them. Cause, yeah. because you know, out of 95% of your people aren't going to be working that 5%, you want to keep them fired up. You know what I mean? No, I'm just yeah. kidding. Not 95. But, but you know what I mean? It's so, uh, here's just, we have a lot of support and, uh, yeah. <laughs> what does the accountability piece mean to you? It's good. I mean, granted, you know, nobody likes being told that they're not doing something, you know, but at the very beginning of the year when we all met and we kind of, we, the cool thing about this team is that everything's out in the open. They, you guys asked me very nicely, how would you like us to come at you? You know what yeah. I mean? And so everybody in here is differently and, and I'm an out there sort of guy. And I just, I, I like it straight, kind of like straightforward, but yeah. respectful, of course, it's the same way, you know, it's the same thing, same way. So it's just, it's just, uh, I don't know. It's it's good to be accountable because if not, I mean, who else is going to do it? You can blow smoke up the wife's tail all day long about how great you're doing at work. And, you know what I mean? It's just, yeah. no, but somebody here at the office seeing you do it and, and keeping a fire lit, it's, uh, I think it's an added bonus. Yeah. Yeah. And you, I know like you coming in um, and, and we, listen, we, we don't, we're, we're definitely not micromanagers. I mean, we're all adults here. Um, but at the end of the day, we understand that, you know, if you if you go to the gym with a trainer, you're typically going to get a better better workout. Right. And that's Agreed. so that's kind of the way we have set our system up here. And, and like you said, we kind of ask for, for your permission to hold you accountable. Right. I mean, you set you know, you set a goal when you walk in these doors and you say, you know, I want to make 100 grand. What is it going to take for me to be able to do that? Right. And then we build out your economic model and we say, hey, OK, listen, to make a hundred grand, you need to be on, you know, three appointments every week, right? And and then we hold you accountable to that, right? So we need to know, excuse me, we need to know the number of dials, we need to know the number of contacts, we need to know the number of nurtures and appointments, right? If you're doing networking events and stuff like that, we want to do everything we can to support you to hit your goal because that's what you told us you wanted, right? So that it's it's really not coming from a place of micromanagement, it's coming from a place of uh, we're dedicated to helping you hit your goal. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing to do. I mean, you, we can all talk a big game, you know, but it's nice to have somebody that kind of stays on top of you. Like, and you guys are real positive about it, which is what I really like. Uh, it's more like, you know, are these the goals you said, has anything changed since then? You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, so, and, and, and we have weekly trainings here to help us get better and better and better. And, and we've even had trainings that, during the middle of the training, it changed because there was a better topic to, to do. So it's all about trying to make everybody on this team a better version of themselves. I don't think you guys uh, uh, are micromanaging at all. Uh, I yeah. think it's more of a, it's coming from a place of love, I think. So it's, it makes it easier to come to work. I can tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, that, I think the thing I'm most proud of in our system is the fact that we can bring somebody in like you, um, and we can we can build out we can actually build out a a a unique economic model that fits exactly what you said you wanted, and then build out a plan, put together a plan or a foundation behind that, and then hold you accountable to hitting that number, right? And so you know, and then provide you the leads, the the admin support, right? The uh, the coaching and training, the accountability, right? All those components are critical when you're talking about having success at a high level, especially in an industry where the failure rate is 85% or, or more. And so talk to me about like, what is the future hold for you, man? Like where you've started off obviously gangbusters, man, but like, where do you look to take this to, man? Well, I see this as being my last career, so uh, I plan on hopefully making some waves. To be quite honest with you, uh, eventually I want to beat you here with some monthly numbers one of these years. Uh, I would love but that's, <laughs> I know because that means we're all doing good here. If I'm doing that too, because uh, but that, that, seriously, my goal is to. I don't have a, an income goal. Uh, I like the fact that I still have control with the fam. I mean, the family, you know uh unit that we can do the things we want to do but i definitely want to spoil them a lot more so as it relates to uh 
going off and doing my own thing or, you know, starting some real estate mobile. I, I, you know, it's nothing like I just want to, I want to, I want living and I want to enjoy the people that I work with and I want to be able to just do what I want to do. So, um, you know, at some point I'm sure I want to do the same thing as you. I want to mentor. I want to help people, uh, you know, be successful. I've always been that type of person anyway. That's why I coach soccer too. I just love seeing people develop. Um, so at some point, honestly, I'd probably like to be, you know, down the same route that you're doing right now, but, uh, I've got a little bit of learning to do in this industry. So I'm hoping maybe the next year or so, I just put the nose down and really go to town and see how many I can rack up and see how much I can learn. And then we'll probably reevaluate then. Well, listen, brother, I have no doubt that you will have success at the highest level. And I can't wait until you sell more than me. Cause like you said, that means we're all doing something right. Um, you know, I gotta ask you, man. Um, and I've had questions here about the shirt. So talk <laughs> about the shirt. All right, real quick. This is a, well, if you've watched Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, which in this movie, we, I mean, in this uh, office, we like to talk about everyone coffees for closers. So this particular shirt is one that my buddy and I have done, uh, from ridiculously good t-shirts. And as you can see, it says, uh, ask my co-worker about their new steak knives. Uh, so if you've seen the movie, you know, he says the, the top three prize is Cadillac Eldorado. Second prize says steak knives. And third prize is you're fired. So, you're fired! Yeah, you're appreciate fired. you asking about it. <laughs> yes, sir, man. Hey, John Clark, man, I'm so happy you took a couple minutes out of your busy day to jump on with me here, man. Listen, I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. And thank you for everything you do for us, man. Well, I appreciate you taking a chance on me. Awesome, brother. And we're out. Yeah,